We are Flake Rose and Spears, and we are supremely black, dropping content that matters. How y'all doing this week, fellas? It should be Kifo J Flake, man. Everything is a couple static, man. Can't complain about nothing, man. Um, it's been a little bit of an emotional roller coaster this week with everything that's still going on, and the information we got today before this podcast has started that another black man been shot in L.A. So it's just been a little bit, just been a little bit frustrating. I don't have a whole story yet. Uh, y'all can look it up. It's Have they been released tonight? The LA. They didn't release the name yet, huh? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, they they got his name. Oh, they they I, finally I, released I, it. Yeah, yeah, they released I, his name. Because uh, when I was watching the story, they didn't release the name yet. So I just seen the uh, the lieutenant talking and speaking, but they didn't drop no names. Nobody was saying no names, but. I just seen the video where they was like, what you arresting a dead man for? What's that going to do? And stuff like that. But I didn't know right. they released the name. They did release it. Y'all have to excuse me for for not remembering. Because I just got it not too long ago. Uh, but he was shot in the back while running away. The story, and, and they don't have body cams in L.A. County. So all we guys, they kept they, – Right now is what you saw, Speed. I saw that same video where they were shooting him and saying, "Why you resting dead, man?" It's pretty much the only video we got right now on it. Uh, I might be wrong. I think his name is Dijon, Dijon Kezi. I think is his name. And, I, and if I'm wrong, please forgive me. But that's that's just what's out right now. And I mm -hmm. might be saying it wrong because I'm reading the name. I hadn't heard his name being said, so I might be saying it completely wrong. Um, but the story is that, you know, the police was stopped. He was riding on a bike, and the police was stopping him for some type of vehicle situation. Uh, I don't know what they could be for on a bike. Once again, I don't live in L.A. LA County, so I can't tell you if they got certain rules about riding bikes in the street. Is that the other? So they're going to stop him. He, took a, he dropped the bike, took off running. Uh, he had clothes in his hand. Uh, when they finally caught up with him, the story is, the police is telling the story is, he punched one of them in the face, dropped the clothes, and took off running. But when he dropped the pile of clothes, they saw a gun in there, and that's when they started to shoot. And it, the gunshots range, of, I read 10, 10 shots. The other one say, some of them say he was shot 20 times. I'm not sure, but one shot is too much in the situation. Once again, he was shot in the back, running away. And what you shooting Not for? The gun, guns in the bag, and he dropped the bag. No, what they, what they said it was in a pile of clothes. So yeah, I know. He but with the, the pile yeah. of clothes was in the bag, and if he dropped it, yeah. what you shooting for? Man, your guess is good as mine, man. But once again, I'm a little frustrated and emotional roller coaster this week. So, D Rose. Uh, yeah, this this D Rose man. It's been a um, overall mentally. It's been a good week. Uh, the family straight. I'm in a good place. I think uh, just really processing everything that's been going on and uh, just really staying focused and, and positive the best way possible. So uh, no complaints at all uh, for me this week. What about you? Sir? Uh. I, I'm I'm a little bit on the side of flight, and that's because uh everything that's going on, and then the NBA players not doing what or or doing more so of what I thought they would do. Then uh I I said I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm transparent as hell, so. I lost my job, my new job, for taking a shit too long. And so I didn't know that I was being timed taking a shit, and I was in there for 30 minutes. And so I, I lost my new job for taking a shit too long. And that really pissed me off and brought me to a level. And I was telling Dexter Rose, I was telling Dexter, I was like, if I had the capital and the money that I needed, I would have went up there and pointed the pistol at the person who fired me just because you playing with my livelihood like that. And because I, I will have the bail money to get out of jail, I'll take that charge. But 
you don't play with somebody's livelihood because they're taking the shit, and then you don't even ask them. First of all, I didn't know 30 minutes was a long time to take a shit, especially at work, because I got to set up the toilet. You know, I got to wipe it down with the paper towel and soap. Then I got to fold each roll of paper towel on top of the toilet to sit down. So that's about a 10-minute process. But then I didn't know you getting timed and taking the shits too long. But then if you would have asked me, I'm on a new diet. So I'm on a diet and I'm eating all clean and healthy. So that'd be having me use the bathroom. I'm using the bathroom literally three or four times a day at minimal. And so, you know, I didn't know it was a problem. And so that just really pissed me off because it was a white man who uh, ultimately made the decision. And it's just like, I got kids to feed, I got bills to pay, I got things to do. And you jeopardizing my livelihood just because I was using the bathroom, doing something natural in human nature. So that added to my frustration with the police brutality and all this other stuff and, you know, just us getting murdered. And so I just been on edge all week and I was like, you know, I'm not going to say shit about it. I ain't going to talk about it. But with the thing that transpired today in LA and all that other shit, I just had to say it. That shit really got me, it got me hot. Like I, I've been hot all week from that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I look at it like this. I completely understand where you're coming from with the frustration of, you know, losing your job for this, but, uh, you almost got to create a segment that says, what the hell did Chris do at work this week, bro? <laughs> like, well, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, out of all the shit, literally, possible, this is how you lose your job. Like, bro, I have never heard that. Hey, man. That, hey, man. Um, hey, that's worse than Craig getting fired from stealing boxes, man. <laughs> yeah. on, a, on, a, on a day off or something, bro. Like, <laughs> on a day off? Yeah. No. Like, hey, what? I don't want to laugh at, I don't wanna laugh at my brother misfortune, but I ain't never heard no shit like that. <laughs> this man got fired for taking a shit on the clock. <laughs> I ain't never heard of no shit like that either. Point intended. Like, I ain't never heard of no shit yeah. like that either. Well, I mean, on a on a positive note, you are on a new diet, so hopefully you get got good and cleaned out well. <laughs> before you punched yeah, out. I hope so. <laughs> 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 that, wow. Hey, hey, I hope I hope it was so good for when he got finished. He got them little riblets. You know what I'm saying? Little, you know, you get the abs, and on top of the abs, you got the riblets on the side. Yeah. <laughs> he, I hope he had to send maintenance. Yeah, I hope they had to send maintenance in after that one. Man. Right. I, I, I wish I would have fucked it up. That's crazy, bro. But man, look, uh, prayers to you getting blessed with a, you know, they closed one door, three more open. So, you know, prayers to us coming open for you. So yeah. if anything comes open my way, I know it's a lot of jobs. My job's actually high, so I keep in the loop on what's going on with that. But appreciate it, appreciate it. Not be getting fired for Hey, bro, just... Taking a number two. I, I, can, I can guarantee you that. But, <laughs> but so. I, I, hey, I honestly you think yet. God trying to tell me something just because this second time in three weeks yeah. that something transpired where I didn't lost a job. And the, the first time I could take ownership because even though I was disrespected, this is something that I said in prior podcasts or whatever. I still got to learn to control myself and my temper. But uh, this time, it was nothing I could do about this. Like, literally, nothing I could do. Man. To be to be let go of a job like that, and I was busting my ass working good because the other boss told me, like, you're doing a damn good job, you know, all this other stuff. And then next thing you know, I'm getting a text. Don't report to work. You've been let go because of this. It just, like, that shit was infuriating, but I think God trying to tell me something, so I'm just, I'm a, I'm a stay meditating, praying, and you know, reading my word and stuff and trying to figure out what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Well, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but trying to find the door that can help me open, that actually opens to help me actually pursue what I'm trying to do, so. 
whatever's on your heart, whatever your passion, just push forward. Uh, apparently, that's that's exactly what you need to be doing. So, like you said, find that find that door, open it, screw it. Let us know how we could uh, help. I mean, I know I know we're laughing about it because it's a crazy, obscene uh, situation. But in all actuality, everybody needs to be uh, having some kind of cash flow at this particular time because if it, Cash ain't flowing, you will start to uh, result to other things to bring in cash that may not always be the best for you. So definitely stay focused, stay prayed up, and uh, stay intentional. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. On and uh, kick off the topic since we know shit happens. <laughs> in, a, yeah. in another place where shit happens. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, one topic I want to kind of bring up is that uh, this week I saw an interview uh, on Nick Cannon's Cannon's class where he talked to a pastor in in Chicago uh, by the name of Michael uh, Fledger, and he went on camera to admit something that he actually seems on eyes that we have always heard, but nobody ever came on camera. I'll put it in right that they have actually seen it, and he stated that. Uh, in Chicago, we always point at Chicago as being, you know, one of the most violent cities in the country when it comes to black on black crime. He made the statement that it could be cleaned up if they really wanted to do it. And you no, know, it kind of puzzled me because I'm saying like, well, I don't know. It seems like it's a little bit under control. But then he made one statement that kind of threw me out there for a loop was that the simple fact that he said that the government it got their hands on what's going on in Chicago. He said he actually seen on two occasions where he have seen white men, government, he claimed they government officials. He don't really know them personally, but he said it seemed kind of strange to him that two times he seen them throw a Nike bag in the neighborhood full of guns and tell those men to protect themselves because it's a war zone out here. Because I always wondered, but I never brought it up because this way, if you want something, this is a way to get it, is that in a low poverty neighborhood uh, like the south side of Chicago, which the unemployment rate is fairly high, how are you going out and getting all these guns? Because I even remember being on Instagram one time and seeing somebody in Chicago with a bazooka. How does a bazooka get in that person's hands, one? Two, once again, with the unemployment rate being so low, uh, with money not being the highest thing there in that neighborhood, how in the world can you afford to get a bazooka? <laughs> like, how, where do you get it? And you just can't triple up on a bazooka. And I don't know if too many gangsters know anybody. They'd be like, hey, bro, hey, call up somebody in the army that can give me a bazooka. <laughs> like, I don't know. So I was wanting to get y'all thoughts on that. I got my own theories on um, why they letting this happen? One, do you believe this is actual fact? Uh, is one thing, and two, what is your thoughts on it? Uh, for for this particular topic, I've I've watched it a lot because I know a lot of the times they like to say that it's it's the rap music that's fueling the war. I know growing up in in our town in uh, Tennessee, we've seen a lot of you know. Gangster disciples, black gangster disciples, vice lords. So we know the gang violence is very prevalent in that area. However, to your point, it's if it's not really somebody that blows uh, in on the rap scene, I don't know where that money's coming from to the point where you're able to have military equipment. Because I do happen to know some people that's in from Chicago. Yes, the gang violence is that bad. It is that big of a war zone. However, it has to be funded. Uh, from outside sources, because like you said, I've seen people and know people from up there like, they got full grenades, bazookas, like, honestly, war equipment in that area. So it has to be some hidden agenda. And I almost feel as if that, based off of just the research that the government is using that as an experiment. Because if you notice that there's other crime-ridden areas, but they're very, very quick to say in a capital state where guns aren't even able to be carried like that, that we will send in military enforcement to do like martial law. So I feel like that every time there's a major holiday, you can almost guarantee that when you wake up in the morning, you can guarantee overnight that Chicago is going to be one of the main cities they bring up had a massive string of murders. And I've even seen videos to where they've had P 
people that aren't black, not just saying white people, dress up in black faces and, and hoodies and all that, and they have a black face mask on that are going out doing some of this stuff. So it's a, a lot of it was happening within the protests. It's not truthfully just black on, uh, you know, as they consider it black on black crime, uh, but it's people just either planting guns in the hood, but also people from outside coming into those hoods and sparking a, or inciting a war more than uh, what we've noticed. Because honestly, to get your hands on some of them guns that you see in even the videos and just normal everyday life in Chicago, that's a lot of money being spent for some people that are clearly standing at, in Section A houses or government funded buildings. Like, you mean to tell me you didn't have enough to pay for rent, but you could pay 13, 15, with a scope, rifle, beams, and all that. Like, it could happen, but to the point where everybody's equipped with it, where it's like Iraq, nah. So I definitely think it's some, it's some, it's some outside stuff going on, or inside job going on within uh, Chicago, and they could care less to clean it up because they can always point to when they want to cover up something. This happens in Chicago, and you see all the, even political people use it. Well, look at Chicago, but Black Lives Matter. So I feel like it's some it's a hidden agenda behind it. Uh, as for me, uh, in my research that I did, I seen the video that you're talking about, uh, Flake. Also, I believe you posted it on our page as well, uh, a snippet of it. I also seen an ex-gang member, and they didn't say his name or whatnot, and he was talking about how, one, it was an article, with the video of the ex game member talking. And he was talking about how one, he woke up at six in the morning, one of his boys called him and was like, come outside, there's some crates, meet me, meet me in this alley, there's some crates full of guns. Like, and he was like on two occasions, he's seen where crates just popped up in the middle of the alley in the hood and, and they grabbed the guns or whatever and they was, which they was, uh, they were strapped. But in the article, and I knew this, but you know, when you actually read it and you're doing research on something and you, you take it in to realize that Chicago or Illinois period has one of the stricter gun laws in the nation and it's harder to get guns. And then to realize the type of guns that these individuals are carrying are fully automatic or semi-automatic military type weapons, we know something's up. Because one, if it's that hard to actual, actually buy a gun and to get a gun in that state because of the gun laws and everything, then we know that when you go to buy a gun, you can't buy a fully automatic and you can barely by semi-automatic, it's special occasions where you could get a semi-automatic uh, weapon from an actual gun store when you're purchasing or whatnot. But even with that, you still need special licenses or special uh, certifications or certificates, so to speak, to even purchase those type of weapons. So therefore, it baffles me that these individuals, because like you said, the South Side, the West Side of Chicago, in these neighborhoods and you watch the videos, you watch they, them doing some some crazy stuff sometimes, but then you also watch their rap videos and you see the type of weapons that they carry, you know they're not purchasing that from a, from a store. And so it only adds up that somebody is providing them and, and contaminating those areas or that area just that city in general with them weapons. And so I just wish that we would be smarter and do better. But again, when, and, and as the, uh, the ex game member said, when you take the OGs out the hood and you lock them up and everything, the young boys don't have no, no sense of direction and they just being reckless and taking off. And so they lost the structure. And so when you're trying to get it in this, is by any means necessary, is my life over your life, is protect my hood from, from this hood, is protect my family, do this, or whatever the case may be. It's a dog eat dog world. So it's gonna be hard to survive or hard not to do certain things. 
However, I wish sometimes we wouldn't be so easily to become a product of our environment in a sense to where we are impacting and being a detriment to our own culture and community. And so. Yeah, I get where you're coming from in regards to that, though. But I know, I know just coming up in those environments, and it definitely wasn't as bad as Chicago, but money is the only thing you're kind of taught or you're deprived of, and respect is the only thing that you can stand on. That's, you know, you're not really living for much because really every day is like, I'm going to either take yours or mine, regardless if that's something uh, you your life that's something materialistic you got you know what i'm saying and it's it's unfortunate because i can't even because you know when you in those type of environments it's all survival and it's literally a war zone and so people look at it and another thing it's kind of a little bit off topic but i hate when people are even covering chicago from a sense to where they're almost hyping it up because Outside looking in, you like, man, this this crazy. Like we usually go to All Star Weekend every year, but that was one time where we were just like people want to go to Chicago and have a good time, like we went everywhere else. But is it even worth the risk because of what the media puts out? And then I know people that's from there, and people have split thoughts on it. It's like it's not that bad. You go with somebody you know, you mind your own business, you cool. But you look at the videos or the the murders, you like, nah, if they doing it to people that literally, when you look at the crime areas, that is literally like a two or three mile radius where everything is going on in those sections. So those people can't even hide from each other. So it's like, we looking at like, oh, that crawl, that's a big city like Houston. They, no, this stuff is happening like right in the same area from in around each other. So it's, it's, it's sad, man. It's like, cause those young kids, like you said, they separated, they take away what they would be considered as like hood leaders from back in the you know, 70s, from Larry Hoover to Jeff Ford. Like, like, there's nothing really you could do with that, right? Like, you, and then you took their leaders away, and now they're in prison. They can't call a shot. And we know how it is as a young cat. You're not really respecting the OGs like the earlier people did. Like, that meant something back in the day to be considered OG. Now it's like, oh, that's an old cat hating on me. And he's really just trying to give you advice. So, yeah, we would want them to look at it differently, but I've also been that young hothead. It's just like, they ain't talking about nothing. Like, I didn't got into a flake about stuff that I know for a fact I should have been doing, but you ain't really trying to hear it because you have the experiences. So you have to think, have to experience it, but it's a life or death situation every day you leave the house because somebody else is being taught, ain't no hustle. It's protect or keep they go and do so like that whole drill music scene the government hands like there's so much shit they can really do in those cities and in like the dark world uh the dark world we'll never know because they too busy beefing same with anybody it's like you'll never know what they really doing or who they planting in the hood to do x y and z it's sad man honestly yeah it kind of yeah it kind of make you think think a whole lot of if, if that part is going on, what other parts going on? Like you said, then you know, if you if you hadn't been asleep and you've been viewing the internet and you've seen these body suits that they get on when they talk, the mouth move, the eyes is blinking, the whole nine like a bald haired black man. You know, and they put on the hoodie and you can't tell no different. You know, then they put some gloves on so you they can cover their hands up. So you really can't tell no difference. So we've seen those. So those are being made for a reason. Uh <laughs> um and then also, you know, I got me thinking about, you know, when they're supposed to put all this educational funding in the West Side and South Side of Chicago, they're supposed to put up all these millions of dollars, and they said they was going to do it, and they approved it, and then they went back and decided not to invest their money there, and then Chance the Rapper having to decide to, you know, put up a lot of his money for after-school programs, this, that, and the other. So a lot of that is also uh, affecting the city when you get, you know, a low poverty weight rate that goes along with it and unemployment. Uh, but it also made you think that we got to start protecting our neighborhoods when we see stuff like that. Like, don't take the bait. My, my thing is, and I'm not saying Chicago's the only city or community that they're doing it in, but no, I, no, I want to know. No, no, no. No, I know they're doing it in other. I'm just saying, I want to know or I wonder why Chicago is so so much of the ground zero 
Like, why is it the biggest known city you know, that they're doing it in? And, and why is why is that the place that they chose or that they're choosing to, I guess, I don't even know if it's a, if they really trying to do a, a a test run or or figure it out or or whatnot, but like it just I I just don't understand. So I can't even formulate the words or get it out because it doesn't make sense to me. Like logically, like yeah, why Chicago? I think I get where you're going with it because just like looking at the studies is Chicago, like inner city Chicago is still very much predominantly black. So it's one of those cities that is like very big that it hasn't been extremely gentrified in those areas. So like the only the only way that they can really just keep pushing gentrification is exterminate. Because if you're not going to leave these areas where your grandmother moved in and there's people dying left or right, you've almost grown immune to it. So you're not even looking to move out, you're just looking to survive in it. So they push push them out in like different cities. Like I've seen it in Nashville, I've seen it a little bit in Orlando, like lived in Antioch. Antioch used to be predominantly like a, a place where people came from different places in the city and you would go there if you were like a, a college student and you just getting your first job and it was like very affluent like people it was like a millennial city basically. Now when you go to Antioch it's trapped out like Bell Road hot, Murphy Bell Road hot, Harden Place hot and by hot I mean it's very crime ridden now. It did not used to be that way so it's more or less of if we turn this into an area that everybody's going to, that people are trying to go to, okay, so how can we make the city better? So inner Nashville now, it's almost extremely gentrified. So like you go to 40th block in West Nashville, you may see people running, condos being built. And so now all those people that were in inner city Nashville are now in Antioch. So now we push the problem outside the city. So Nashville looks great. We're not reporting the crimes going on there. So now you can report those out of cities Antioch, Laverne, why are they bad now? Because you push the people out, you're getting rid of housing apartments that are putting people in predicaments to say, hey, I want to better my life. So now Chicago's just like one of those cities not going, like, like even with Baltimore, same thing's happening there. It's very affluent, black people are really getting money there. What's happening? High crime rate, what are people doing? They either leaving or they dying. We're going back to the block regardless, that's their plan is to get push people out. Same thing's going on in Houston too. No, no, I get that. I was just like, you know, when you think of New York, LA, when you think of like, as you could say, you could say Houston because of the population. Yep. When you think of uh, New Orleans to a sense, you know, but since post Katrina, you know, New Orleans is a little bit different. That kind of helped gentrify New Orleans and get some of the things differently. Yep. So, but when you just think of cities like that, and I'm not saying Chicago is not a big city and it has great architecture and, you know, the actual downtown city of Chicago is beautiful and everything. But like you said, the, the inner city is the, the parts, I guess, where they're trying to exterminate and gentrify. But I was just wondering, like, when you think and when you grow up back in the times and you think of the black meccas, you know, you think of a Washington, D.C., you think of a New York, you think of a L.A., and then possibly Chicago. So I just want to know why was Chicago, or why is Chicago really the test center? But I really can't, you know, it don't make sense to me. But again, you know, sometimes it might have just been the easiest spot to to drop them in, you know. Yeah, yeah, you got to look at it. It's no different. Well, New York has the same crime issue. Chicago has the same crime issue in LA. All those areas are known for gang violence at this particular point. Top three cities in America. Like in by population, so what's what better way to do it than put it out there as if this 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 big war zone? So either you get out or you're going to jail or you're dying. Like that's it. Like we yeah. we want the inner city, oh, yeah. and that's how they're gonna do it. Yeah, D Rose, you hit the nail on the head with the gentrification. That's where I was gonna go with it. I actually talked to a family that's from Chicago uh, about three weeks ago after one of my comedy shows. And they was telling me they was in Nashville and the wife was like, I'm looking for somewhere to move to because the taxes have gotten so high. So when you start getting taxes being so high and you start getting, you know, property taxes and all that being so high where people start to move out, of course, we got to keep this rolling so we can buy up 
so we can try to move those people out, buy up their land for cheap, and then build that up and sell you now that you know that uh ninety thousand dollar house that your grandma lives in now going for five hundred thousand. You know, so I think that has a lot to do with it. And like D Rose said, the people in Chicago, the black people in Chicago ain't going. They're like, we not moving. I mean, it's a lot of people that's moving out, but it's some that's ten toes down in the concrete that's not going anywhere. Um, and like I said, when you start doing the research and you notice all these programs they had, and they said they're going to fund it and do this, and they take them back, you know, you starting to think, well, what are y'all really doing? Y'all not trying to resolve the problem. I think that's why uh, some people are saying we need to get the National Guard in there and clean it up, because they know if they can get the National Guard in there and clean it up, guess what? We getting rid of it. We start busting people out, start getting rid of people, do like they did for, in New Orleans with Katrina, where after it was over, they told everybody to go on the bus. People didn't even know they was moving, took them somewhere else, and then now they got, you know, half a million dollar condos they done built, you know, across the river, this, that, and the other, where the project used to be. So I'm fearing that's pretty much what's going to happen in Chicago. They're just having a hard time doing it because they were seeing it. Now it's like, well, I'm going to get these people to move out and we gave them all these weapons. We just can't walk up and down the street and, <laughs> and tell these folks to keep rocks. And it ain't about to happen like that. And, and also, you have to think. Me, uh, go ahead. Yeah, also you have to think about it. It's it's it's, it's profitable too. People are dying. Yeah. Uh, music is selling. It, it's 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 almost easy. It's like we can either in other cities we push them out by you know floods or just having more money, or you can just let them play itself. It's it's gains. It sells like music industry. Like you can sign a hot artist out of Chicago. You can guarantee out of both sides it's gonna be at least twenty or thirty on the light end of bodies on from all clips because we funded we're pretty much funding the war, and from a record deal we're gonna we're gonna make money out from whether he's dead or alive. So it's profitable. That's the sad part about it as well. It's like they look at it like Adam. Like we're gonna profit regardless whether he's dead or alive. So and he, and his sleep reminded me of the the crack epidemic almost that started in California. The government started that too. And, and, you know, some people don't want to believe that, it, but it's like, what black people was going down to Columbia and getting cocaine? It's like, what, what, what black people was being able to afford to go talk to the club down there, get the cocaine, fly it back? No, it wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, drug use and vehicles. No, they was flying this back. We don't own no planes. And then there's a few white dudes that come up like, yeah, I drove the plane. They moved the cocaine back and forth, you know, to fund a certain war that the government was trying to do. They couldn't put, you know, they couldn't put it out there. That's what they was doing because it's the United States of America. Of course, we want to look as squeaky clean as we can as the dirtiest we have been in this country. So it's what reminded me of that. Is there some backing behind this that y'all trying to do? Is is what y'all doing in Chicago? Is it is it funding trying to build this wall? Like what's going on? It's it's it's, it's it's crazy. It's insane. I know people don't like to think our government is up to things like that, but you do your research on the crack epidemic, and it, I mean, that was a long time ago, and it's just not come about that they really was funding. They, they was really funding it. And, and that's why I, I wish we was just smarter. I wish we wouldn't, we wouldn't be their, their puppets. And I mean, I know I know it's easier said than done because you know I, I've been in situations and environments where you know you got to get it how you live but when you know better you do better and I know everybody in them neighborhoods and them areas and them cities aren't oblivious to what's going on somebody has some some sense and, and knows like this is what they're doing to us. And then even when you watch the news and you see the stories and you do the research, you see the old heads talking and get interviewed and say, you know, we don't want it to be like this. We don't want to live in this environment, but where can we go? What can we do? And we try to tell the kids, you know, not to do this and they're using us, but the kids are still doing what they want to do. So I just wish at some point, you know, we will actually listen sometimes versus thinking we know everything or having to learn everything through experience because at the end of the day, they're just using us as puppets and we're actually doing the work for them. Because as y'all say, it's a, 
it's one, a financial thing. So it's, it's about the money. But two, it's also a gentrification thing. So getting us out, moving them in. Then three, and this goes to the finances, but it's the extermination slash getting us in prison, which is free labor. So, you know, at the end of the day, I just wish we would be like, and actually this book right here, The Spook Who Said By The Door, talks a lot about this. And it's just so funny that we're talking about this and then my book on the table. But uh, it talks a lot about this and, and the story is actually based in Chicago, like what he's trying to do and the things that he's trying to do. And I just wish that we actually would be like, hold on, wait a minute. My my hate for my fellow man, my fellow brother, my skin folk is not as bad as my hate for how they're trying to set me up and play me as a fool and make me kill my own people or rob my own people or harm my own people just so they can get us out of here and move them in. And so that's just the thing that really, that really kind of hurts your heart. But then growing up, how we grew up and seeing certain things or having people, you know, that we love and care about grow up and, you know, we see how they grow up and hear their stories and all this other stuff. You can understand and you understand why it's happening, but you just wish it wouldn't. And so that's my biggest thing, you know, battling the understanding aspect and then battling the aspect of like, say my homie, you like say my brother, like, don't be, don't be a puppet. Don't let them use you. Don't allow this because at the end of the day, you're doing exactly what they want you to do. Yeah, I definitely get where you're coming from. I think a lot of it comes from like, like, and not just to kind of reiterate the point is, it's the media coverage of it. Uh, Illinois is considered a blue state. Of course, they want to point at any blue state that's going against, uh, you know, the grain in regards to what they stand for, especially since they are one of the ones that actually want to take away like gun laws or gun uh, rights or privileges that we do have. And so with it being a blue state that's being Chicago, being the biggest city in it, and so crime ridden with guns, of course that, you know, CNN and whoever else likes to report that just they benefit off of it as well. So it's just kind of, I hate some things are so political. I wish it was more, like a, from a logical perspective, like you're saying, Chris, of us just kind of really just going on. I heard this on a podcast, shout out to my uh, my guy that I be listening to, Big Facts Podcast, of just a 30-day crime fast of just really slowing down and just saying, like, look, to your, to your point, it, it right now, I know we didn't been at war, we didn't did this, but we really just need to take a, take a step back to say, is this really us to us or are we being used as puppets because if we all just sat back and said okay look let's call a meeting let's let's call a truce for a minute and we still seeing bodies drop then we really realizing what we really fighting against because it could be that it's really that bad or it could be some outside forces that's this entertaining as well and keep igniting every time they feel as if it is it didn't die down and they start to see unity because if they see a unity in a big city like that uh, they're going to they gonna come out with the best, best best trick in the bag to get people back up around. Like, if you see Los Angeles come together like they did after Nipsey Dale, if you can see Chicago <clears throat> unite like that, you talk about scary hours for people that's just basically banking off our destruction. Like, you, that's scary when black people are unified. Yeah, we got to figure some way to make it happen. Uh, for those that think people are not out there doing work, once again, I've said on in a podcast on Stephen One, there's people out there doing groundwork, but you'll never see it. Just like you don't never see the piece of protest on TV either. They show the piece of protest on TV for for one or two days, and after that, they are gonna show where something happened in the protest. So um, there are people out there doing groundwork. Once again, like I said, just shout out to Linda Sussar, Mike Son, Michael uh, Fledger, uh, Common. Uh, Chance the Rapper, Nick Cannon, you know, just to name a few. I'm sure it's other people that's unknown that that's not that popular that's out there doing work as well. Uh, but but you won't you won't hear about the good stuff. You won't hear about that at all. So 
shout out to all those who are out there and then for any neighborhood out there this you know every every city got a bad side every city got a side that's where it's where it's violent uh whether it be in the white neighborhood black neighborhood Hispanic neighborhood asian neighborhood wherever is that so uh we had to come together at, at some point in time and just start the violence from each other and realize that you know when we stick together you know uh we can make this 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 country the place that we really want it to be uh, and then also i like to just say real quick, the black on black crime thing is, is falsehood. I hate when folks say it, it's really falsehood. You really, people killing each other that's, that live close to each other. The white on white crime happens, the Asian on Asian crime happens. <laughs> it all it all happens. For some reason, we just put out there as being the only people that's doing black on black crime. If you want to look in, you know, want to do your research, it's more white people killing white people than it is black people killing black people in this country. If you don't believe me and you want to do that research, just turn to uh, what's that? What's that female? What's the female network that I not TLC, but the other one uh, where they be showing all the movies where the woman done killed her husband because he beat on her, cheat on her, whatever. I forgot the name of the network. You talking about Snap? Yeah, uh, yeah. Snap they ran out of episodes yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> if you think white on white violence ain't happening, Snap ain't ran out of episodes. You best believe that. <laughs> hey, that's that's really like they version of first four eight, no cap. Man, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I mean, so. Nah, for real. Yeah. 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 But, we but that's hit, this we is a topic. That, this is yeah. This is definitely a topic we got to follow back up on because I would love to have a guest from Chicago. Uh, the kind of somebody that may still either live there actively or that has moved away and kind of can really shed some light on what was their first 20 or 30 years like living there before they happened to leave. Why did they leave? And uh, what do they think like a resolution for everybody that's within the inner city that is really being faced with gentrification? Because not saying that we don't have our own things that we need to take care of in house, which is a definite fact. Uh, but gentrification is playing a huge part in that because a lot of those places that were a little bit further from each other, now you're really around the block from that person that you know for a fact that you've never seen eye to eye with. So that's huge. So we're looking, though. we definitely got to follow back up on this one because I know this is going to get some attention. Oh, yeah. But I would love to have a few of those guests. And I have a few sisters in mind that I know would not mind uh, sharing their thoughts on it because they have a podcast as well. So we'll take it with them. That's cool. Yeah, but we're going to run into another subject, but. Uh... I was gonna say we was gonna run to another subject, but we run a little short on time. Uh, that that subject took a little bit longer than I thought, but it was a subject need to be discussed uh, and talked about. And if we said something incorrect, and and if somebody in Chicago they reach out to us, they, that that ain't exactly how it's rolling, and they're actually doing this way. So we just gonna we don't we not from there. I'm just doing research that I read about. I'm just doing look, speaking on interviews that I've seen uh, with people that's in the area. So. Reach out to us if, if you say something different, if something else going on. If you got something to add on to that, and hey, we can keep this conversation rolling. But Spirit, do you have a uh, black business minute? Oh, did you have something else to say? My bad. If you did, my no, bad. no, I was just saying true that, true that. I do got a black business minute. Uh, the black business minute for this week is Coral Oral, and so it's a black owned. I don't want to call them a toothbrush, toothbrush company, but I guess a oral care company. And so uh, what they do and what makes them different is not only are these two brushes more aesthetically pleasing, you differ differentiate each brush by its pattern and not by its color. Our company is proudly black owned and highlights oral health facts, including a black history fact that we all should know. So the website for them is CoralOral.com, C-O-R-A-L-O-R-A-L.com. And again, it's a black owned uh, oral healthcare company that, you know, is made by black people, you know, uh, produced by black people. And again, they're all about the oral healthcare of your mouth and of your, uh, you know, your gums and your teeth and everything. And then they also let you know 
I guess, what's important for black people to do and, you know, just the different makeup of our bodies that differentiate from, you know, other people's uh, bodies and oral care and how we need to treat our mouths versus just treating it as a generalization of everybody needs to treat their mouth the same way because we know we have different genes, we have, you know, different makeup and as far as every race and creed. So therefore there are some things that might, that we might need to do more that others don't need to do or that we may not need to do that others need to do. And therefore they just help educate you with, you know, being a black person and taking care of your, your mouth orally. And so that's the black business minute, coral oral. Coral. Make sure you floss every day too, boy. Don't nobody want no deep clean. Woo. Hey, you admit to this? They did a deep clean on your mouth, Lord. That's yeah. Like, that stuff so hurt. Bad. Yeah, that stuff hurt. So bad. Anyway, uh, so y'all check out Coral Oral for our uh, for our supremely black person of the week. You know, some people might disagree with this because he might have said some things here lately. That a lot of people disagree with, but I'm gonna give it to him anyway for what he's doing. And I'm I'm going to Akon. Akon is our Supreme Black Person of the Week. And with that reason being, it's not because of his music, as you know, he's a not only multi-platinum, but I want to say his first three albums went diamond. And they, you know, they really have. Uh his first three albums with diamond. And what he's done is he invested that money and he didn't blow it. He took it, took that money, invested it in some land in Africa. Uh, he's building a city in Senegal, uh, which he's going to call Akon City. Uh, we heard about this some time ago, long years ago, but I had to make him Supreme Black person now because he is continuing on with this city. Um, he said within the next five years, outside should be able to come to visit, and by uh, 2030, it should be completely up and running all the way. But you can come visit it in 2026 is when you come visit the city itself. Um, he get got he bought two thousand dollars worth of I mean two thousand acres of land in Senegal. Uh, he said the government has been working with him on this, and they are laying the original pipeline for for uh, for plumbing and thing and for water plumbing and all that. So that's outstanding that the country of Senegal is working with him with uh, with getting that land down that foundation. But he'd be responsible for you know building the schools. They're going to have their own fire department. They're going to have their own police station. It's going to be, Akon City is going to be, have, like, any city you see in America, pretty much is going to be Akon City. They have their own hotels or whatever. One thing that's very interesting, though, is that he will have his own currency. So it's, it's kind of crazy that the country is going to have their own currency, but Akon will have, when you come to that city, you got to turn that currency in for, I think it's called it, Crypto, it's gonna be a cryptocurrency, but it's called, it was I think it's called Acon currency or something like that, Acon bucks or whatever it's called. It's gonna be called. But um, and they asked him, said, why are you not using the regular? I forgot what the Senegal dollar is, the Senegalese dollar, whatever it's called. He said, why are you not using that? They said, well, that's owned. That dollar is owned by the French. And he said, I'd be damned if I would let them put their money <laughs> in my city, so they can have no control when they come here. They got to turn that money into my currency. So he is a supreme black person, and uh, I can't wait. I think I might need to save all my money now to visit uh, Acon City whenever they come available in 2026. And and you said that you know if any black person wants to move to Africa, it's a lot of opportunity after that. A lot of black people are scared. They don't think it'll be opportunity, but he said there's plenty of opportunity in Africa for people to make their money. He said, look at me. It ain't no way in America, ain't no way in the world, the United States, they would give my own city. They might give my own city, however, they won't let me have my own police department. They won't let me have my own fire department, and they definitely won't let me have my own currency. So, Akon's our spring black person, and uh, might be the first black man to have this. Well, I ain't gonna say black man. I'm sure there's other black people out there that got their own city, but the first hip hop rapper entertainer to take his rap money and flip it into creating his own city. That's gonna have generations of wealth for him and his family. Doesn't he have like um, solar as well? Oh yeah, I wrote that down too. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Also, he has a uh, he has a solar electric company as well that has brought power. He said they in 
I want to say in a hundred and some countries. Uh, uh, and then he has put power with electricity to 34 million people. He has brought home electricity to homes of 34 million people as well. Yeah. So Aegon Ryan doing big things. He's doing big things, yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't know nothing about this because I really don't pay attention to blogs and different stuff like this. What did he say that was controversial? Oh, wait. Well, I mean, man, he said in an interview at his own mouth. You got to go through a blog. You, you know, what he said was is that um, he said as American black people, we need to let go of the past because with slavery and stuff, when you run around, they wait on you. It's kind of hard to move forward and run faster. And he said one thing he liked about one of the African countries over there is they, there's no res resemblance of slavery or nothing. And they've been able to thrive. And his, his opinion, his opinion is, is that if we kind of let that go and move forward, um, we will be able to thrive a little bit better. I help us thrive a little bit better instead of looking back at that. But oh, that's I disagree with him on that one as well. I, I, yeah, it's very ignorant to me because they owe us. They, they, you owe us. <laughs> like you. I, I would say this, though, from you. <laughs> you, 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 you can never forget where, you know, for some people it may have started. But I, I think that could be easily missed and screwed because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he's viewing it from a mental standpoint because we've all been in part of yeah. movements that we are not still confined to because we understood that we are bigger than what we were forced to, forced into. So we grew out of that. So like whether it was your hometown or some homeboys that really didn't mean you any good, you grew out of that. So more or less from a mental bondage standpoint of when do you let go and still be your greatest version of yourself because there's nothing that we can do to change the past. Now, if you say they owe us, they owe us, but you still should be living as if that you're still on a plantation if you're mentally free from that. So I think that's what he really meant, but you can, you can mix it however you want to. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, w I would agree with you, but then after that, he said, well, we need to quit sitting back like they're going to pay us reparations but because they ain't going to never do that, which which might be true. Well, he said they, they can't do it or they wouldn't do it, which might be true, but I used to think that way, too, until this pandemic happened and they dropped off all these trees of dollars. Then it's like, oh, we got it. They just don't want to do it. <laughs> That's another time. Well, 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 I just want to add my thing because I know you, you big on trauma bonding, Rose. So I get your standpoint and you big on that. However, I would say this to Akon or anybody who believes like him. I agree that you should let it go if they stop doing slavery type stuff to you. The prison system is slavery. Our legislation and judicial system is still slavery. Us getting murdered on a weekly, damn near daily basis is still a form of slavery. The whole topic that we talked about today with Chicago is still a form of them try to still put us through a type of form of slavery. And so that's the only thing. How can we let something go? Like, because I believe in that country in Africa, they're not still trying to do residual slavery on them. They're still not trying to do implement forms of slavery on them. But in America, we still know that there is still a form of slavery that they're trying to perpetuate in this society. And so that's the only thing that I would say. I do agree, agree with your standpoint on like, if you grow from something and you're not a prisoner to that no more because you know better, you do better, you educated yourself, yes but there's still some forms of slavery that are being perpetuated on us in our daily lives, even if we give it the, the limelight that it doesn't deserve, even if we pay attention to it, we know that just because of our skin color, sometimes we might not be able to elevate to a position that a white man who is less qualified than us can't elevate, or we have to fear anytime we drive by police when the white man right next to us don't have to fear that. And so that's the only thing that I would say that he he kind of tripping on. Yeah. And, and to add to that, now this is the country that that won't change the constitution that was written when slavery was taking place, nor would they change the national anthem, which we all know it's a whole verse in there talking about killing slaves. So <laughs> that's why 
That's why people been kind of giving him heat because of what he said on that. So I can I can understand both sides. I'm gonna take it as the brother and mentally. No, I feel you. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, yeah. I haven't seen I haven't seen it, so I really can't speak on it. But I'm about to check it out as soon as we get done yeah, with I, this. But go ahead close it up. I, I send it to y'all. I will say this All though. Right. Watch the movie Emperor. It's a good movie. It's about uh, a black man who helped uh, be the catalyst for the civil civil war, and also it was a white man was involved too. But it was about a black man uh, basically being the catalyst to start the civil war and to help uh, have a revolt that helped lead to the beginning of the civil war to free to free slaves. So. It's a good movie. And it's not long at all either. I, I think it was an hour and 30 or 45, but it, it really seemed like it was only on for 45 minutes. That's how good it flow and stuff. So Emperor, it just came out. Man. And I'm done. So if you want to close, well, Rose, you got anything to say to the people? Black lives are golden. That's it. And I just want to say I love y'all. You are loved, you are special, and you are somebody. I haven't said that in a minute, so I just want to say that to y'all. Y'all are love, y'all are special, and y'all are somebody. You can close this out, Flay. I was trying to get some tissue in here before we end the episode, but <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I know we we gotta have this topic soon, but I'm gonna say this for y'all. Y'all niggas don't fire me. Cause I'm on the toilet. <laughs> we accept all the shit you come with, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Follow my queens yeah. out there. Put your crown on. Tip that thing to the side. Let them know you are a queen. Follow my kings out there. Put your crown on. Tip that thing to the side. Let them know you are a king. We are supremely black, and we out. Yep. Yeah.